Okay, welcome back to Natural Language Processing. The next topic is going to be on sentiment analysis. So sentiment analysis is a very popular sub area of natural language processing that has been popularized in the last few years. In fact, the very first papers on it were not published until the late 90s and the most important contributions in, are, have only been made in the last few years. So what is sentiment analysis? Let me start with an example. So uh, I'm going to pick a, a book that I particularly like by a uh, Japanese author Haruki Murakami. Suppose that I want to find what sort of reviews were posted about this book. By the way, the book title is 1Q84. Uh, what reviews have been posted on the internet? So here are some examples from the Baltimore Examiner. 1Q84 is a tremendous feat and a triumph a must read for, for anyone who wants to come to terms with contemporary Japanese culture. That example, perhaps one of the most important works of science fiction of the year. 1Q84 does not disappoint. It envelops the reader in a shifting world of strange cults and peculiar characters that is surreal and entrancing. And finally, uh, another example of a review, ambitious, sprawling and thoroughly stunning Orwellian dystopia sci-fi, the modern world terrorism, drugs, apathy, pop novels, all blend in this dreamlike, strange and wholly unforgettable epic. Well, by this point, it should be obvious that those reviews are actually fairly positive. And if you like this kind of books, you should, uh, based on those reviews, decide to read it. So let's look at some of the things that we can see in those reviews that make us believe they're positive. So first is the presence of specific words and phrases that are typically correlated with a positive review. So triumph, a feat, a tremendous feat, must read, entrancing, ambitious, stunning, unforgettable, epic. All of those are examples of positive phrases. In fact, there are very few negative phrases in this example at all. So here's another example about companies. So there's this website that uh, shows you in real time uh, the sentiment towards different companies and their stocks. And people use this kind of information for trading. So you can pick some sort of uh, uh, stock ticker and observe how sentiment of that company changes over time within days or hours. Here's some other examples of sentiment analysis for things like movie reviews, product reviews, debates. For example, the createdebate.com website. So there are many posts and blogs that express uh, sentiment. Some of them express personal opinions. And there's some different research questions that we're interested in. So one is something called subjectivity analysis. So before we decide that something is, whether something is positive or negative, we have to decide whether it's subjective or not. Because clearly factual information is uh, different from subjective information. So once we have performed subjectivity analysis, we can do polarity analysis, essentially labeling things as either positive or negative, or perhaps giving them a number of stars. So let's say we read a movie review, and we'd say based on the text of the review, we give it four stars out of five, or perhaps five stars. We can also do viewpoint analysis when there are different topics for debate. So is there a person a Chelsea fan or a Manchester United fan? Is this person a Republican or a Democrat? Another research question is, can you figure out the sentiment target? Are you uh, giving your opinion about an entire product, for example, the Apple iPhone, or about some specific uh, part of it, for example, the screen or the wireless connection? So the level of granularity is very important. It can be sentiment for an entire document, for example, movie review. It can be the level of individual sentences or perhaps individual attributes, for example, the music about uh, of a certain movie or about a specific actor. So opinion words are important. So there's different types of those. There are base words, such as, for example, pretty or difficult. It can also be comparative. This movie is better than the other one, or this uh, processor is slower than this other one. Well, if we just count positive and negative words, uh, we're not going to get a very good classifier. So, for example, just looking at the negative words is not enough because some of them can be negated. So, some, if we say something is not difficult, that means that it's easy. So, uh, one important component of sentiment analysis is negation analysis, where you take uh, all the occurrences of negation phrases, such as not or didn't and so on, and try to figure out what things they negate so that you can possibly change its polarity. Let's go back to the reviews of 1Q84. So the second review here includes uh, some negative words. For example, the word disappoint. 
But in fact, if you read the review more carefully, you will realize that it says does not disappoint. So we have a negation of a negative word, which turns the entire thing into a positive phrase. Okay, so let's look now at product reviews. So here's a website from Google uh, where people have uh, written their reviews about a specific uh, smartphone, Samsung Galaxy S5. And you can see that they have uh, a total of 2,800 reviews. A few are have given uh, one or two or three stars to this product. Quite a few have given it four stars and the rest have given five stars. But what's more interesting is that you can also have sentiment about individual aspects of the product. For example, its battery or its size or its camera and so on. And as you can see, uh, the battery gets the highest positive rating, whereas the design and the screen and the speakers and the headset get relatively fewer positive reviews. So again, all of this can be done automatically by reading the reviews and identifying polarity words associated with the product or with uh, individual aspects of it. So it's also possible to use uh, social media sites such as Twitter uh, to compute sentiment. So there's a website called Sentiment 140 where uh, you can see what sort of things people say about the product on Twitter. So again, using the Samsung Galaxy S5 example here, we can see that the majority of the reviews in Twitter on Twitter are positive. So there's some important problems that have to be resolved. I'm not going to propose solutions for them at this point. I just want to make sure that you know that they exist. So problems with subtlety. Sometimes people can use some very subtle formulations and explain uh, what they think about a certain target concession. So for example, we can say maybe this product has this problem, but on, on average it's a pretty good product. Uh, they can also be manipulation attempts, so for example, trying to convince you that some product is good. People also can use sarcasm and irony, which are very difficult to detect, and so on. So now let's look at sentiment analysis as a classification problem. We want to classify the documents or the sentences into positive or negative. So what kind of features can we use? We can use individual words, for example, whether they appear or not. We're not really interested in their frequency because most of the time they're going to be used just once. Uh, punctuation, for example, emoticons, uh, phrases, uh, the syntax of the sentence, all of those can be valid features for classification. One good thing about sentiment analysis is that a lot of training data is available, so we can take entire websites that have product reviews and also look at the number of stars that were given to that product and use this as a training data set. There's a very nice data set uh, from a paper by uh, Bob Pang and Lillian Lee at Cornell University that has movie reviews annotated both for polarity, positive and negative, and also for number of stars. So the techniques that are used are the standard techniques used in classification, for example, maximum entropy or support vector machines and naive base. So there's some very really nice resources available. For example, the CMU Twitter parser is available from Noah Smith's website, and so on. Uh, so this is the end of the introduction to sentiment analysis. In the next section, we're going to look at specifically at sentiment lexicons.